Accessibility is the goal of making it possible and easier for more people to use or enjoy something. We often think about people with handicaps, but it can benefit anyone really. Think about not having the time to grind a level, being a beginner with video games, or even having temporary handicaps. We've been talking about it more and more in games over the years, and for example, GMTK made some videos to look at the state of accessibility in big games. It's clear that some of them are going in the right direction, but there's still some work to do. In this video, I want to give you some clear and relatively easy ways to make your game more accessible in Godot, with code examples. Also, before we start, I'm still very new to accessibility, so if I make mistakes or whatever, please use the comment section to tell me. We're all here to learn, but let's do it in a friendly manner. Let player adjust contrast and brightness. In Godot, using a world environment, under the adjustments, you can change the brightness and contrast. You can expose these two settings, allowing the player to adjust it using sliders, for example. If you have screen shake, strong visual effects, or controller vibration, let the players toggle them. Better, make it possible to tune the strength of the effect. For that, simply multiply all the values you normally use by a factor. Expose this factor with a range of 0 to 1. 0 meaning the effects are turned off, and 1 the effects have the value you intended. Make your UI more accessible by having the ability to change the font size or the whole UI size. With dynamic font, you can directly change the font size by doing your control node dot get font with the font name and then change the size of the font. With the right anchors and size flags, your labels and buttons should adapt. Another way is to scale the whole UI. To do that, you can place it under a viewport and then use a viewport container to display the result. By doing that, you can dynamically adjust the result resolution of the viewport. If your viewport is set to stretch, the lower resolution will make the whole UI bigger. It's not a perfect solution, of course, as the UI can get blurrier. I didn't find a real solution to scaling the whole UI. If you have one, please share it in the comments below. Separate music, dialogue, and volume sliders. In Godot, you can create a separate bus for music, sound effects, and dialogues that all plug in the master bus. And then you can separately adjust their volume using audio server dot set bus volume db, audio server dot get bus index sfx value in db to change the volume of the sound effects bus with the desired value in db, for example. This can be especially important if you have lots of strong sound effects or important dialogues. I want to see your smile again. I miss you. Of course, also providing a master volume slider to quickly adjust the overall sound level is good. Quick tip, while we are talking about sounds, when the game is started for the first time, don't put the sound level to 100. Reduce it to something like 50 to avoid rupturing your player's eardrums. While we're talking about sounds, make use of the audio stream players 2D and 3D. If you don't know these nodes, they're like normal audio stream players, but they emit sounds from a location. You simply use an audio stream players 2D or 3D with the sound effects you want, and out of the box you have spatial sound, if your player has at least stereo speakers, of course. You can also play with the attenuation and max distance to tune when the sound effects should be heard. This is a good way to help players identify things and where they are, especially those with reduced vision. This is a good example of something that can benefit everyone. While we are in the audio part, let's talk about dialogues. One way to make them more accessible is to have them as subtitles at the same time they play. Creating a fully-fledged implementation might be hard, and at the moment there's no way to do it built in Godot, but it's in discussion, you can check out the proposal here. Thankfully, Queen of Squiggles made an add-on for that. I didn't try it, but it looks quite nice. If you have experience using it, please share with us in the comments below. Localize your game. You might not think about this as accessibility, but you have to remember that not everyone speaks English or whatever language your game uses. Doing good localization can be hard and costly, but the technical implementation in Godot is relatively easy. You can import your translations from CSV, and Godot is going to create a file for each language. In the project settings, you then specify which translation file to use, and then to use the translation, you can directly put the key in your UI 
for example, or you can call translation server dot translate with your key or use TR with your key for a shorter syntax. You can easily switch the language whenever you need using set local. It's also possible to localize resources so you can easily switch font for different languages or audio files, for example. Let's move to gameplay stuff with button remapping. Allowing the player to remap the keys and buttons used to play your game is crucial to be more accessible. If you're using the Godot input map, and you should, you can call input map dot action erase event to remove an event from an action and input map dot action add event to add an event to an action. The input map singleton will not be saved though, so you have to save the configuration somewhere and reapply it at the start of the game. On screen, you can see an example where you remap an action to a key pressed by the user. This remove all the events associated to an action before replacing it with the new one. Handling all of that can be quite a pain though, so another solution is to use add-ons made by the community. One popular add-on is Keychain, and it's used in Pixelorama, a pixel during app made in Godot. Input remapping can be difficult to implement, especially if you allow a mix of gamepads and keyboards, for example in a local multiplayer game. To add a quick tip to this one, another easy way to be more accessible is to have more keys for each action by default. For example, for movement, you can have the usual WASD and arrow keys. Another cool feature with Godot, you can now set an action to use physical key. So Godot will get the placement of the key on the keyboard, meaning that if you press on Z on an Azerty keyboard, it will be the same as pressing W on a QWERTY keyboard. This allows to enable even more people to play without having to tweak anything. Make it possible to slow down the game. This can be done quite easily using engine.timescale is equal to 0.5 to half the speed of your game, for example. Of course, this will slow down everything. So if you want more control, like slow down only the enemies or the movement, you can do it where you calculate your movement's velocity. I made a video about that if you're interested. Now I want to talk about other ways to make your game more accessible that are harder to showcase in a few lines of code. Take into account color blindness when choosing your game's colors. Of course, this is not always possible, but this can benefit everyone, not just colorblind people. Having good contrast between the important or moving things and the background is one way of doing it. If you have to choose colors, you can read about it on the internet, there are tons of resources on the subject. The developers of Scorchbringer actually created the art making sure it was going to be accessible, which is a good example that you can be accessible and make a good looking game at the same time. In my game Dashbong, I added the ability to choose your team's color. This is a feature that everyone can enjoy and it hopefully makes it more accessible too. In Godot, you can use the add-on color blindness, which is basically a screen shader that tries to emulate what different types of color blindness look like. You activate it and select the color blindness you want to check and voila. Now you can design your game with color blindness in mind. And the point is to avoid using only colors in your design. You can add patterns, for example, and maybe text to differentiate between elements. If you only rely on colors, it might be difficult to be completely accessible. Make your game easier to play. Before you jump at me screaming, hear me out. Make it possible to play your game in an easier way. This requires some work if you still want to make your game design coherent, but you can play on different parameters to adjust the difficulty. More jumps, more health, less enemy health, invincibility, etc. To make sure this is useful, make it available at all time in the settings from the pose menu, for example. One famous example is in Celeste, where you have a bunch of accessibility features to make the movement easier. Continuing with the idea of making the gameplay easier, avoid forcing player to hold a button for a long time, or at least add an option to use a toggle. For example, instead of holding the joystick button down to sprint, use the button to toggle between sprint and walk. Another way to help the player is to implement aim assist. This is something we've seen more and more over the years to help the players on console aim better with a gamepad. Some games do it out of the box because otherwise the gameplay wouldn't be as fun. Rollerdrome is a good example. If you play with a gamepad, the aim assist is awesome because you already have so many things to do in the game. Being forced to aim perfectly would feel terrible. If you're interested about aim assist in Godot, subscribe as I will be making a tutorial on that pretty soon. 
If the previous tips are not enough, simply make it possible for the player to skip a hard part or a level. We've all been stuck on a hard level for hours sometimes, for whatever reasons, and in some case it's so frustrating it can make you quit even though you would enjoy the rest of the game. Being able to skip to the next checkpoint is something that can be tremendously helpful for people to enjoy your game. Last tip is specific to VR, but as it will be more mainstream in the future, I think it's important to talk about. Add a setting for handedness, or make it possible to use whatever hand to perform things. For example, teleportation should be possible using both controllers, or if it's tied to the main hand, make it possible to change which is the main hand. While we're talking about VR, you can also add a setting to take player's height into account. This is especially useful for younger people or people in wheelchairs chairs, for example. The interactions in VR are often tied to the player's height, so this can be really important to make VR more accessible. I think it's now something you can set directly into the MetaQuest settings, for example, but implementing it yourself won't hurt. As you can see, there are quite a few things you can do right now to make your game or app more accessible. Taking everything into account, especially as an indie, is very difficult, if not impossible. If you can, make the experience as customizable as possible, but don't stress it too much. The most important thing is to consider your players, be open to feedback and listen to the community. At the moment, there's no way to know what are the accessibility features on most storefronts. If you want, you could add the features that you made at the bottom of your Steam page, for example, or redirect the player to your website where you go into more detail about it. As I said in the beginning of the video, I'm still very new to the subject, so don't hesitate to correct me if I made mistakes. Also, if you have other tips and tricks to make more accessible games, please tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching, bye!